Hello guys, in this video we're going to be explaining the lesson Interpreting Linear Equations and this is the second lesson in the SAT math portion. This lesson requires a basic knowledge in linear equations and we have a complete video on that lesson on this channel so I recommend you watch that before we begin. But if you already have you know, a basic understanding of this lesson, I want to bring your attention to this one point before we begin. y equals mx plus b. This right here is the slope form of a linear equation. And the linear equations can come in different forms, but it can always be manipulated into this form. And this form is super beneficial because it tells us the slope directly. And as you may know, the slope is the rate of change. Meaning, it, is, it tells us you know, how much y changes every time x changes or increases. So how much x affects y. And an example of this would be y equals 2x plus 2. Here the slope, because it's in this form, is directly shown here as 2. And that means every time x increases, y will increase by 2. And we can even prove that by putting 1 in the place of x. And 2 times 1 is 2. So when x increased by 1, y increased by 2. And this is super important to understand when solving this lesson because this lesson deals with the slopes a lot because they want us to figure out how much one variable or how much the change in one variable affects the other. Okay, so for the first question, here the question says that the cost C in dollars from an airplane flight given that the average cost of a first class C is F dollars and the average cost of economy C is E dollars is given by the equation above. If all seats are sold, what is the best interpretation of 88E as shown in the above equation? Now they're asking about the interpretation of 88E. And by looking at the above equation, we can see that C is the cost, as they said, 24F plus, which is equal to 24F plus 88E. And we know that F is first class seat, number of first class seats, and E is the number of economy seats. And 24F means that the cost will increase by 24 for every first class seat, and the cost will increase by 88 for every economy seat. But here they're asking about 88E. So we can tell that 88 is the cost of one seat, and E is the number of seats, which allows us to say that 88E is the total cost of seats, of uh, the total cost from economy seats, because 88 is the cost of one economy seat, E is the number of seats, but 88E together is the total cost from economy seats. And let's see the options here. They said that there are 88E economy seats on the flight. That's incorrect. If they said there are E economy seats on the flight, that would be correct. But they said 88E, so that's not correct. The total cost due to economy seats is 88E dollars. Now, yeah, that's what we've been saying. The number of seats with the price of one is going to equal the total cost of seats due to economy seats. So B is the correct answer based on our understanding, but let's just go through the other options just in case. So let's evaluate option C. The increase in total cost for each economy seat sold is 88 E dollars. Now they said the increase in total cost for each economy seat. For each economy seat, it's 88 dollars, not 88 E dollars, because that would be the total cost due to the to all the seats, which we mentioned in B. So that's why C is incorrect. Now D, the increase in total is $88 when the economy seat prices increase by $1. Now they never mentioned that because they said the increase is $88 when economy seats remain the price that they are, 88. But if the price is increased by $1, then it would be 89E. So this is just false. So we can say that D is also the incorrect answer, leaving B to be the only option. B is correct for this question. And now on to question two. So the question says the total energy E in joules of a metal cylinder with an angular velocity of, I don't know the name of this variable, so we're gonna say W radians per second, and a height of H meters above the ground is given by the equation above. The height and the angular velocity are independent. Which of the following expressions is the energy due to angular velocity? So the question wants the expression that tells us the energy due to the angular velocity. Now let's check the options. Here they gave us the variable that tells us the angular velocity, but it does not tell us the energy 
of the angular velocity. So this is just incorrect. And then here they tell us 43.66, which we can see in the equation is multiplied by the angular velocity to give us the total energy. But by itself, it's, it's just a number. It does not give us the total energy of angular velocity because we didn't discuss the angular velocity here. So the number by itself could not be the total energy due to angular velocity, so that's just incorrect. Now here they said 43.66 with the variable, which gives us the number for energy multiplied by the angular velocity, which will give us the total energy for angular velocity. So this is the correct answer for sure. We can say C is the answer, but let's just evaluate D. And here they give us, yes, this is the total energy for the angular velocity with the number that gives us energy, but it just got added to a random number. So this just, this isn't the total angular velocity. This is the total angular velocity plus this number. So this is just incorrect. So the correct answer here is C. And now on to question three. Um, they give us the equation and they said a nutritionist uses the above equation as a measure of the total calorie C and a half bagel covered in M grams of cream cheese. What is the best interpretation of 24 as shown in the equation above? So right here they told us the equation for the calories for half a bagel and they told us this gram of cheese and they told us this is the slope, this is how much M grams of cheese affect the calories of half a bagel. Now let's see what they, they want exactly. They want the effect of 24. So let's check the options, the interpretation of 24. So a half bagel with no cream cheese has 24 calories. Now that's simply incorrect because if we said zero cream cheese in the place of M, zero times seven over 24, that's zero plus 105. So it would be 105. So A is incorrect. A half bagel and, okay, so let me just, A half bagel and 24 grams of cream cheese have the same number of calories. They a half bagel and 24 grams of cheese. So 24 grams of cheese, we'd have to put 24 in the place of M. And that would cancel out with 24, so that would leave 7. So there's 7 calories for 24 grams of cream cheese. And for half a bagel, the calories would be half a bagel without any cream cheese. That would be 105. 105 calories and 7 are not the same number, so B is incorrect. And now for option C. The number of calories increases by 24 every additional 7 grams of cream cheese. Every additional 7 grams of cream cheese. So let's say we put 7 in the place of the grams of cream cheese. Sorry. So that would be 7 times 7, which is 49, over 24. So the number of calories would increase by this number for every additional 7 grams of cream cheese. And they didn't say this number, they said by 24, so C is incorrect. So we can automatically say that D is the correct answer, but I just want to explain why that is. So here they said the number of grams of cream cheese increases by 24 for every additional 7 calories. So they kind of did the opposite here, they said they want to see how much the cream cheese increases for the change in calories. So we could manipulate an equation to have, yeah, let's do that. So we can manipulate the equation, which is C equals 105 plus 7 over 24, sorry, 24M. And I want to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to multiply 24, multiply here by 24, multiply here by 24 which will cancel out with this, leaving 24C to be equal to 105, uh, 105 multiplied by 24. Let me just do that real quick on the calculator. So that is 2,520 plus, and we said this 24 to cancel out with the other 24, leaving 7M. And now we can take this to the other side to get M alone. So 24C minus 2,500 20 equals 7m, and then to get rid of the 7 here, divide everything by 7. Leaving this as the equation, let me just rewrite that actually. Okay, over 7. Now they said that the number of grams of cream cheese increases by 24 for every additional 7 calories. So let's say we put 7 in the place of calories. 
right? So 7 here would cancel out with 7, leaving 24 to be the amount m increases by. So if the calories were 7, m increased by 24, meaning this statement is 100% correct. Number of cream, the, the number of grams of cream cheese increased by 24 for every additional 7 calories. This proved that it's true. Okay, so now on to question four. They said a factory determines that a strawberry with a mass of S grams dipped in chocolate increases to an approximate amount of C grams, as given by the equation above. What percent of the mass is chocolate for a strawberry dipped in chocolate? And yeah, we're just gonna write the percentage. So right here they said that S is the mass of a singular strawberry and C is the total mass of the strawberry with chocolate. And to figure out the percentage of it that's chocolate, we're going to do a very basic, you know, math equation. So let's say the, the C is the total of strawberry plus the chocolate. Yeah, okay. And S is just the strawberry. So if we said C minus S, we'd take out the strawberry and leave chocolate. So let me even just write that. So if we said C minus S, we would get rid of the strawberry and just leave the mass of the chocolate. So C, so C minus S, this is the mass of the chocolate. And to figure out how much this mass of chocolate is from a percentage of the total strawberry, we could put this over the total percentage of the strawberry mass, which is C. This way we'll get the percent of chocolate from the total strawberry dipped in chocolate in this equation. So I'm just gonna explain this idea of how we put it in this ratio, because let's say we had one gram of chocolate and the whole strawberry was two grams. That will give us 0 0.5, or we could say 50%. And that means chocolate would be 50% of the strawberry. And obviously if it was one gram and the whole strawberry was two grams, it's 50%. So that's why this equation works the way we set it up. So the mass of chocolate over the total mass of the strawberry dipped in chocolate. Now, since we have the formula like this, we can put that in the place of C, plug that in the equation and solve. So one, two, five, S is C minus S over C is 1.25s. And then 1.25 minus s would be would leave 0.25s over 1.25s. And this will cancel out with this and then we can write this in the calculator which will give us 0 0.2 which we multiply by 100 obviously to get the percentage 20%. This is the percent, this is the answer here, this is the percent of the total strawberry that is chocolate. So 20% of the total strawberry is chocolate. And now on to the last question, question five, they said, Gustafson's law states that the speed up S of a computation of P processors is given by the equation above, where, again, I don't know what this variable is called, let's say A is known, is a known constant related to the parallelizability. Which of the following expressions equals the increase in the number of processors needed for the speed up to increase by one? Now they give us questions that have a bunch of scientific terms, seems super complicated, but the idea is quite simple. They really want us to see what increase in P will make S increase by one. And since it's given to us like this, P is kind of shown with the slope, but we want to see how much, we don't want exactly the slope here. We want to see what exactly P needs to be to make S increase by 1. So I can say that this is the increase of S. So this needs to be equal to 1 to find the value of P that makes S increase by 1. Okay, hang with me here. So 1 minus this variable times P. Now we said this is going to show us the increase in S. And this needs to be equal to 1 to show the increase of s being 1, for s to increase by 1, right? So let me do that. Now, we could just manipulate this by dividing 1 minus this variable 
1 minus this variable to get p alone. So p has to be equal to 1 over 1 minus this variable to allow s to increase by 1. And we can see that this is not the answer, this is not the answer, this right here is the answer, and this isn't the answer. So this value of p will allow s to increase by 1 because we set up the equation like that to figure it out and we found it here. So C is the correct answer for this question. So thank you for watching. I hope you understood this lesson. So please like and subscribe to help a fellow student out and don't hesitate to comment. If you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer everything.